Hey, what's up, people? So I just wanted to go live, kind of, this is not really live, but whatever. And I want to tell you, I just got a phone call. And this has been something I had never thought I would get a call about, but it's good. Jezebel has been dealt with. This is uh, something I just, like I said, I'm just in shock right now. Years ago, I gave a, I was part of a church. Uh, it was a rather large church, about 1,200 members. I gave a prophetic word, and it, it boiled down to the senior pastor was Jezebel. That's what the whole prophetic word boils down to. Okay, ended up being involved in a church split, and because I, I basically he didn't want God's presence, he wanted his presence, not God's presence. And um, he ended up basically, and basically I told, I said that the church would not exist if they didn't get rid of him. Prophesied it, it happened. The church no longer exists. The last hundred or so of them went and started a new church. And with a new pastor, new everything from scratch. So it, it just, it is what it is. Um... So that happened. He took a bunch of money. He took a bunch of sound equipment and all kinds of stuff and took off for Texas. Okay, and that's where I thought the story would end. Um, recently, all kinds of stuff has came out. Okay, and there's all kinds of conversations happening right now. Um, and basically, he's finally been addressed okay he is he's a slick slick he's slicker than a used car salesman he knows how to manipulate people and so that's you know how do I feel you know I I got tarred and feathered by leaders back then people I mean, the elders were upset with me. District leaders were upset with me. All kinds of people were upset with me because they felt that I had led a rebellion. And it was, it was because I knew what was going to happen. I had seen it prophetically. I knew the challenges that, that were coming. And it... So, that's kind of... It, do I feel vindicated? Kind of, not really. Um, I wish people would have listened and we wouldn't have had a church that no longer exists. But I'm glad that finally the stuff came out. And the people that came against me, most of them are no longer alive. So, it, it, and I'm not really like, I told you so. It's more, I wish they would have listened and go, hey, next time you deal with a, with a used car salesman type preacher, discern it. We need discernment. You know, no matter how slick they are and how well they know they're, they're, they, they can talk, we need to, the discernment needs to cut through all that and say, what spirit are you of? Do are you you know it's easy to sit around and talk about all this great stuff, but the good thing is, at some point it will be addressed. But we desperately need discernment, so we don't have these type of situations ever again. You know, churches need men of God, not slick talkers. Not people that know the language, that know know the that what to say, and can and are great orators, and they can give you a a great little motivational speech. And see, one of the indicators that I had with this guy is he always stared veered away from repentance and holiness preaching. He would talk about how we just need to love one another and, and uh, the gift love is greater than everything and he kicked first Corinthians 13 to an extreme and 
And at the end of the day, I, I was standing and I said, the gospel is repent or perish. We must pre you know, uh, kind of how I came into it when I, when I first started asking questions. It was Pentecost Sunday, and he called the baptism of the Holy Spirit more of God. If you need, if you need a, more of God, that is not the baptism in the Holy Ghost. The baptism in the Holy Ghost is not a more of God. Baptism of the Holy Ghost is a baptism of sanctification. It's a baptism of power. And it is evident by praying in unknown tongues. So when he was sugarcoating that, it began to ask question, what else is he sugarcoating? And then I had, I had the encounter with the Lord. I won't go into all the details, but I saw a, a cape. And it was holes with holes all over it. And he had a crown that was looked golden but it was actually spray painted and it was black underneath and it was this guy that was wearing this stuff and I knew then that it, I was dealing with Jezebel that I was dealing with Jezebel and it's the only time I've went and and said to a pastor you have the spirit of Jezebel now I I'm I may have had they have characteristics but this is the first time I'm, I was comfortable enough to say I'm dealing with a bona fide legit Jezebel so just please have to we need the sermon in the church today God bless you see ya